Despite its name, Wheating Castle, near the village of Wheating in Norfolk, was never, strictly speaking, a castle. The ruins are instead of a three-storied manor house built by Hugh de Place in about 1180, ostensibly to demonstrate the wealth and power of the de Place family. De Place was a tenant of William de Warren, the Earl of Surrey, and the Warren's stronghold at Castle Acre is thought to have been the model for the manor at Wheating. Excavations at the southern end of the site have uncovered ditches, burnt daub, post holes, and pottery from the settlement of the Anglo-Saxon period. The ruins are of a large hall and an attached two-storey chamber service block, which contained a pantry and a buttery, and a passage that led through to an outside courtyard. Excavations have revealed a freestanding kitchen and a boundary wall shielding the courtyard from the view of important visitors. At the other end of the hall, was a taller three-storey chamber block. Above a vaulted ground floor, probably used for storage, was a suite of private chambers with a mural fireplace. To the rear of these chambers was a latrine block, containing three cubicles, which drained into a room at ground floor level. This would be regularly cleaned through a small door near the moat. The rectangular moat that surrounds the manor was added in the mid-13th century. The manor remained the possession of the de Place family until 1390, when it passed by marriage to the Howards, the Earls of Norfolk, and was promptly abandoned and left to fall into ruin. It was eventually incorporated as an ornamental feature within the grounds of the now demolished Wheating Hall in 1770, and the dome brick-built ice house on the northwest corner was built around this time. This was brick construction covered with an earthen mound. It was built to store ice taken from the moat in winter. Wheating Manor is now owned by English Heritage and is open to visitors. Many paranormal investigations have taken place here, but without much success from my researches into this. Perhaps because the more intact but later period ice house seems to attract their attention for some unknown reason. Indico Paranormal investigated there in 2014 and captured possible footsteps and a male disembodied voice. The video is available to watch on YouTube. I went to Wheating as a six or seven year old with my parents on a holiday to Norfolk in the late 1960s and spent the time there running around the ruins quite oblivious of anything of a paranormal nature. All I remember from this period is a vague memory of being a bit disappointed with the remaining ruins, it not looking much like a castle that the name had implied. I wasn't to return to this place until the mid-1980s, when, having been to the remains of RAF Methwold, and on my way back to Thetford, I decided to revisit Wheating Castle en route. I arrived in the late afternoon, and it felt on first impression to be fairly deserted, just a cold and crumbling ruin in the Norfolk countryside. I did a quick reconnoitre of the site, looking at the surrounding moat and then onto the ice house. This was the part of the ruin that everybody seemed to go to for an investigation, and I thought, while I was there, why not have a look around and see why? It was, as I suspected, just an underground storage room, typical of an ice house. It was cold, damp, smelling, and devoid of anything remotely paranormal that I could discern. I returned to the ruin, and I just walked around somewhat distractedly as I do when attempting contact, and for the most part, it just felt like a deserted, lonely place. Then, as I sat on one of the low walls and cast my mind further, I became aware of a man in medieval costume, not armour, but robes and furs. The furs were brown in colour, 
and his arms in a yellow material poke through the fur. In truth, I really don't remember too much of the detail as the contact was tenuous and it was over 30 years ago. His robes were making him look like a large and powerful man, although I suspect he wasn't really that big in truth, and he seemed to me to be perhaps in his forties. There was no feeling from him of making people unwelcome, no cold spots. In truth, it was exposed and cold enough just sitting there, in the pale afternoon sun. There were no feelings from him at all. He just watched me from the shadows. It seemed he didn't want to make any contact whatsoever. After perhaps an hour at the ruin, it was time to go on to Thetford. But that, and my visit to RAF Methwold, are stories for another time.